If you believe everything you may have seen on television or read in the press about Liverpool during the past 10 years, well, you probably believe that all we ever do here is play football, go on strike and kick one another's heads in. Well, you know, the truth is, the first we do better than most and the second and third not quite as much as the media would have you believe. How you see a city depends on the sort of person you are. Now, I'm a romantic and to me, Liverpool is Disneyland. The city at the end of the yellow brick road. To me, it's big, rough, friendly, like a huge Alsatian that rushes at you, then licks your hand. Love, laughter, tears, all the emotional ingredients are continually being mixed together in this giant cosmopolitan kitchen and spiced with characters. There are more characters to the square yard in Liverpool than Damon Runyon ever dreamed of. Singing better than ever. You know, it's worthwhile coming to the city centre just to listen to you sing. Is it really, sir? Yeah. Will you sing? Will you sing my favourite? What is it, Marta? Is it? That's the one. Oh yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. For me, people are the city, with that peculiar Liverpool sense of humour. The lady who said her husband couldn't sleep at night because he was erotic. The drunk who was moved on by the police for singing Thou Swell outside Mothercare. And old Amy, the flower seller, who inhaled a taxi. Four more for 20 pence. And people like Patsy, with the open, warm, honest face of Liverpool. Patsy. You've lived and worked here in Liverpool all your life. You've served all the people, the rich and the poor. So, so there's nobody better qualified than you. So how do you feel about the people of Liverpool? They're fantastic. Thanks, love. Thank yeah. you. They are. They're great. You know, they tell you about the bad points, but mm. the good ones could smother them. Being out and you see, you know, you're looking at the character of the city. Mm. That character doesn't go. Yeah, it doesn't. People don't go die, not all of them. Patsy can look out and see, probably with mixed feelings, the newer buildings which make every city look like the one you've just left. Like a concrete mushroom, the tower restaurant revolves 450 feet above the city. The only trouble with revolving restaurants is if you miss your sausage the first time, you have to wait 20 minutes before it comes around again. The tower is all part of the compulsory shopping precinct, and I see all shopping precincts as concrete and glass beehives which by their very design seem to compel shoppers to scurry in and out like bees. I have a feeling that when the redevelopment wheel has ground full circle our grandchildren will say let's knock this lot down and build curious little cobblestone side streets full of even more curious little shops selling homemade bread, foreign stamps and lead soldiers. In my job I very often have to go to London, well I suppose we've all got to go sometime but there is a very subtle difference between the two cities, between London and Liverpool. In London, you can drop dead in the street and they'll walk past you. If you drop dead in the street here in Liverpool, they'll do a joke, then they'll walk past you. It's a gift we've got. Liverpool is one huge contradiction. The rugged Victorian architecture, the 1970 buildings looking like something left over from a Flash Gordon picture, and surprise. Could this be a street corner in Paris? And I suppose a community gets the sort of city it deserves. In 1971, a change took place here, which was not only unique, but I think rather moving. This building was once a cinema, and it's now a church, the shrine of the Blessed Sacrament, the only one of its kind in the country. And it must be the only place where X certificate films lost and God won and is showing seven days a week to full houses. As one holy sister said to me, if a housewife buys a pair of shoes for her husband, at least she can come in here and pray to God that they'll fit. This is my city and these are the people I care for.
There have been changes in the last 10 years in Liverpool, and not all of them have been good. The people there, you know, they got moved out. Mm. They didn't want grass because that was the day out going to, on the bus to Coldstones Park. Yeah. They wanted that community, yeah. and they had that. Italy never knocked it out of them. But they got moved out of their houses. These people who went, Patsy, would you say, they really they didn't want to go, did no. they? No. The heart was here. They stayed there, some of them with no water. Wouldn't give in, they wanted to stay, but there was no way to put them. They couldn't win in the end, though. They? they couldn't win. Thank you. They couldn't just, you just couldn't win. We know progress has got to go on. Yes. But, you know, they, they took the community away, and that can always stay if, it's try, if, it, if they try hard enough. So when these people, they, they go out to the city and then they come back in, how do they react when they come back? Made up. Made up. I've seen people giving beautiful four-bedroom houses up to come back to a 40-storey 40, 40 high yeah. old tenement. I'm not talking about blocks of flats, you know, the heights with the lifts, the landings, the old-fashioned tenements, and they'll come back to them and they love us. Anyone from Liverpool must have the same feeling as Patsy. Once a city of almost a million people, now less than half that number. This is the part that saddens me. Many factors contributed to this decline. The loss of trade on the docks and the day of the bulldozer. Row upon row of terraced houses, villages within the city demolished. And the people scattered to the four corners of various new towns to eat their hearts out and try and build new lives. It's all so easy to blame the planners. Planners are human, they make mistakes and they knew it. New homes are being built where they're needed most, right in the heart of the city. Without people, a city doesn't have a heart. It would be rather nice if the long arm of government could reach up to Liverpool and give a helping hand rather than a clenched fist punching holes in the employment figures. On the very day three weeks ago that the government said no to a project that would have given work to thousands in Liverpool, they said we could keep this, the Lyceum Club. It was built in 1803 and in its day was considered to be one of the finest discos in the north of England. It was due for demolition. At the rate jobs are being lost here, it would make a rather impressive labour exchange. When people leave, they take some of the Liverpool character with them. This is Rodney Street. As you can see from the plaque halfway up the wall, Gladstone was born here. Funny place to be born, halfway up a wall. He's gone now. This miniature version of the Royal Festival Hall is now a shrine, a Tin Pan Alley temple visited by people from all over the world. There was the boy who arrived in Liverpool late at night and asked the way to the cavern. He was told to go straight on through the arches. Two hours later, a police car picked him up and asked him what he was doing in the Mersey Tunnel. The Beatles have gone too. And then there was Felicia Hemans, the famous Liverpool poetess. Who? Felicia. Have you ever heard of Felicia Hemans? She was born here and Felicia wrote an epic poem. And she wrote one of the most famous lines in English literature. Believe it or not, Felicia wrote, the boy stood on the burning deck. And you know, I'm sure she never intended it to go. The boy stood on the burning deck. He waved to all the dockers. He waved to his girls. She was known as Cheryl, the one with the great big, she's left as well. Hey, girls. And there were those who came and didn't want to leave. I'd like to show you something now, something a little bit special. Take a look at this. I'll translate it for you. It says, you are holding this plaque upside down. Oh. Now, actually, what it really says is that this is the centre of the oldest Chinatown in Europe, and this pub, the Nook, became the Chinese local in 1940. In fact, it's the only Chinese pub in Great Britain. During the past 10 years, this public house, the Nook, has become an official tourist attraction in the city. Believe it or not, this is the only Chinese pub in Great Britain, and it's right in the heart of Liverpool's Chinatown. And it's the only pub I know of where the landlord shouts time in Cantalese. <laughs> And I'll tell you something else about the Nook, it's got crossroads beat. From Chinatown, it's just 20 minutes to yet another rarely seen face of Liverpool.
good, isn't it? Well, why shouldn't we show up for a change? Something else we're rather proud of. It starts here in the city centre, like some giant man-made ventilator. The Kingsway Tunnel never fails to blow the sweet air in from Wales. I wrote that. I asked Sir John Betjeman what he thought of it, and he was rather moved. But to be quite honest, he ran. The Kingsway Tunnel was opened by the Queen in 1971. It's a great piece of engineering, but one thing puzzles me. What did they do with the hole? How do you get rid of a hole that big? I'm standing on it. This is Otterspool Promenade in the south end of the city, built on the rubble from the Kingsway Tunnel and the contents of millions of Liverpool dustbins. And this time you really can't knock the planners because this is a pure stroke of genius. How many industrial cities in the world can boast two miles of promenade? We may have lost a large number of people, but the ones who are left could enjoy a stroll along the prom with its views across the Mersey. The River Mersey, like a grey arm holding the city in a warm embrace, even if it is polluted. If it gets any worse, you'll soon be able to walk to Birkenhead. You know, this must be the longest lover's lane in the world. There's one thing that you can't escape from here in Liverpool, and that's romance. The romance of the steamed-up car windows down here on a Saturday night, the romance of Chinatown, of the city, its people, and the people who have left. I've seen grown men rushing down the gangway of ships at the pier head and kissing the ground, and they've only been to New Brighton. And there's the romance of what is to me the most impressive, magnificent waterfront in the world. Change is like a BBC check, it's slow in coming. And if there's one change I'd like to see, it's more people back in the city. Because just think, if we keep losing people at the present rate from Liverpool, what's going to happen to match of the day?